Hi, this is Real World Audio and we are starting our uh, children's program for adults. So, Mysteries of Subwoofer Placement, that's the title for the program for tonight. So after you have brushed your teeth, ready to hit the rack, but before we are not there yet. So let's imagine that this is your living room, bedroom or whatever room that we are placing your uh, loudspeakers and subwoofers at. So for any kind of uh, sound reinforcement or sound reproduction in your uh, room, uh, there will be a room effect. So your room is going to make a critical effect on the quality of the bass you are getting. And that's because when we take uh, the dimensions of the uh, longest dimension of the room and the second longest dimension of the room, which, which means like the, the depth of your room and, and the width of your room. And sadly, this is only a two-dimensional program. I, I have no 3D capability yet to record <laughs> or draw uh, or talent to draw. Uh, there's also we need to add the height of your room so that's going to be another uh, another part another factor that's going to impact the base reproduction very heavily in your room and why is that that's because your room defines what are the frequencies that will be amplified by your room because your room itself is a giant subwoofer and that's how we can uh, uh, imagine it or we can also imagine it as a giant uh, sealed uh, loudspeaker cabinet with the dimension of the width and length and, and height of your room and all of these three dimensions define those sound waves which are reinforced and also which are cancelled most effectively by your room so, so let's have a look at it when you go for the longest dimension of your room that will give you what is the lowest possible uh, wavelength that your room will be able to define and that's basically defined by the half wave of your room so basically we are what doesn't want to draw okay so I'm drawing so imagine this is a half wave that spans from one end of your room to the other end. Now, what is a half wave versus a full wave? So a full wave is like this. So we are starting here, here and there. So it's going up and down, right? And, and your room, the, the, let's have a look at it. Maybe let's say for uh, simplicity's sake that your room is uh, 4.2 meters long. And that means that it can uh, house uh, the a full wave of 80 Hertz. Why? Because uh, a full wave of 20 Hertz, that's approximately 16 and a half meters long. We cannot put a specific figure to it because the actual length of the wave that supported it depends on the temperature of the air and it also uh, is slightly modified by the humidity and by the altitude you live at. So if you are at sea level or you live up at the Himalayas, then uh, the wavelength required to form a 20 Hertz wave will be quite different. So that's why uh, the tuning of your room will change with uh, with changing seasons and uh, uh, parts like daytime versus nighttime and uh, when it's really hot and when it's getting colder when it's about to uh, get a, a rainstorm and stuff like that that impacts what will be the uh, actual frequencies that affect your sound and i mean that affect the uh, the, the sonic properties of your room which are those sound waves which are reinforced and cancelled most by your room and uh, to get that sound wave which is reinforced most by your room 
that's defined by the length of the room and then the full wave uh, the, uh, just calculate which is the longest full wave that fits in your room so in this case if it's like four point uh, approximately 4.2 meters that's the size of your room then it can house an 80 hertz wave so it means that uh, if you want to reproduce low frequencies then uh, the the perfect low frequency the lowest that you can reproduce is 80 hertz so so now we have to pause for a little little bit because uh, everyone is talking about going down to 20 hertz or or maybe lower but frankly if your room does not support it then uh, you are never going to get perfect 20 hertz in your room just think about this case so 4.2 meters uh, how long that's it? it? It's like 16 feet or so, like 17, 18 feet. And then for that room size, you are getting perfect 80 hertz. And now, whatever your room can also uh, support, it can also support the half wave of that frequency. So basically, uh, in, in a full wave, it means that the, that the pressure of the sound can rise and fall and then return back to zero so and and the distance during which this occurs that fits in your room so basically your room can support a full wave of 80 hertz and now the next best thing what else can your room support it can also support the half wave so during which uh, the distance your your pressure starts to rise and starts to drop uh, and then the other half cycle that will also occur so then then the pressure will drop and then go back to zero but uh, you will only experience that the pressure is either dropping or it's rising uh, and 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 when you have this type of scenario uh, that you only have the half wave capacity of your room so basically that, that 17 or so feet long uh, or wide room that is capable of housing 40 hertz. So that means that uh, uh, that, that translates to the fact that uh, the, the placement at which you are able to enjoy uh, the 80 hertz, you find much more or I would say many more uh, places in your room where you can sit and you will be able to enjoy that but the placement where you can enjoy 40 hertz the, the, the seating positions for that will be very very limited and, uh, and a few places where, where you can find uh, so that, that you can sit for the half wave to be effective is one of them is at the very end of the room so where where the sound waves start and where they end and, and because that's where the pressure is at maximum or minimum and and if we are talking about the full wave and the full wave is reproduced then it's also here and here so at those spots where, where the pressure differentials are maximum you can also experience uh, the full benefits of, uh, of that pressure wave and it's not just the, at these points but I should draw bars like like the entire wall here the entire uh, it's, it's a column here and then a column here and now when we are looking for the the half wave then it will be centered here that's where the pressure is the most and if you are sitting here then you are benefiting much less of the of the, the pressure differentials of what's uh, happening there and um, i would say that uh, also uh, for the full wave the this place as well so where where you you have the transitioning space so there you also get a, a full benefit well i didn't draw it this should be on the line if my drawing skills were not uh, D minus okay so if you have a full wave then basically you are getting uh, the, the sides the center and you are getting these uh, quarter and three quarter points and, and for the half wave you are getting the ends of your room and the middle of your room and now 
so for that it would be very simple so what you need to do is that uh, when you are listening so in most cases uh, so you see this is the longitudinal section and that defines the lowest frequency that can be reproduced in your uh, home so so with the most optimal speaker placement then you have the, the speakers positioned right here right and they're firing into your room and if you have your couch at this position basically then you are on this axis that corresponds to this node this room node and if your couch is there then basically you can enjoy that full 80 hertz right because the sound is coming from here from your speakers and then it it moves uh, the air in your room and for 80 hertz you are in perfect position here but guess what for the for the 80 hertz i mean the 40 hertz the half wave you are at the perfect uh, cancellation point you won't hear squat of the 40 hertz and and that's one of the conundrums of uh, subwoofer placement and that's why people start like uh, uh, toying around like getting a sub and putting it somewhere else because then uh, that will modify a little bit this uh, scenario and uh, and allow you to exert higher pressure and some somehow try to cheat the system and now the problem that we experience is that uh, this is just one uh, dimension of your room the same thing is happening in in this dimension as well so there is a, a sound frequency defined by that dimension of your room and and for the lowest pressure wave you have an optimal position here here and here so that means like this axis of your room and the side walls so basically it means that if you sit in right in the middle then this axis for for the uh, frequencies defined by the shorter wall will intersect the position right here by which are defined by that uh, the longitudinal waves so then in this position we are at a spot which is uh, at a peak reinforcement for the two lowest uh, frequencies that your room can support and and when your room is a, a good room then uh, these frequencies which are observed here are far away from each other now if you are in a scenario where where the long wall is exactly twice as long as the short wall then you are in a bit of a, a pickle as the british say because then that this frequency is exactly the half of the frequency which is supported by there so that will be represented as as an excessive boominess because when you hear let's say a, a 40 hertz or an 80 hertz note then when you hear uh, the one octave higher upper harmonic uh, that let, let's say in the case of 80 hertz defined by the long wall that will be 160 hertz defined by the short wall so when you hear the two together that will create an excessive boominess and that's what we call a crappy sounding room because that will be a frequency that will be just absolutely smashingly massively overrepresented compared to the rest of the base that's available for your room and uh, and and the effect of this of the room can be quite destructive on the sound so let's see that we when we look at the frequency response curve so here let's say like this is 20 hertz that's like 40 hertz 100 hertz 200 hertz and that's the spl of the reverb that your room gives to the sound so when we look at high frequencies so around 200 hertz your room response is is a uh, relatively flat because uh, there's uh, so many nodes so many positives and negatives and 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 and, and the three dimensions uh, and the frequencies involved are uh, so high 
uh, versus the length of your room that basically all those many reflections where the sound waves are ping-ponging through your walls they create a uniform pressure that we can calculate how many dBs your room add to your to the SPL of your sound and, and depending on how far away you sit from your loudspeaker and how big your room is you can calculate what is the exact amount that you are hearing from the loudspeaker and what is the exact amount that you are hearing as room reflections and guess what in just about 100 percent I, I would say 99 plus percent of cases what you are hearing is always much much more from the room compared to what you hear as direct sound from your loudspeakers and uh, what you hear from as, as from the room as the contribution in down to about 150 hertz or so it's pretty much flat not as as flat but 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 there's tiny tiny blips and bumps on it and if you move around in your room it doesn't change much now when we hit 150 hertz for a smaller room or about 100 hertz for a, a very big living room or let's go down to 50 40 hertz or even lower for a concert hall that's where the bass response uh, starts to behave like a drunken person so it's not it's not going straight anymore but it's going to go blue 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 and and what uh, let me just correct this here because we are not going to get uh, a realistic uh, representation so let me just cross this out and let's say like this is how much your room is amplifying by adding extra SPS to the sound and guess what when we go below that magic boundary which is called the Schroeder frequency of your room below that frequency your room will start to amplify the bass response and but the problem is that it's not going to amplify it at a specific and constant rate however when we calculate the total energy added to the sound that will be at a constant slope and uh, and depending on how well your room is sealed if there is no ceiling uh, which means your room is leaking so you have doors and windows open then basically you have no extra SPL added and and we are keeping it at the zero threshold but uh, when you have a perfectly sealed room let's say like a recording studio or an atom bunker uh, then you have plus 6 dB added per octave as you go down in the frequencies. So let's say, let's say that the, the shorter frequency of your room is 160 Hz, then by the time we hit 80 Hz, then the bass response will be 6 dB up, and at 40 Hz it will be 12 dB up, 20 Hz will be plus 18 db up so you see that there's a tremendous uh, ad added uh, energy to the base and uh, and this goes like that in case your room is perfectly sealed now if you have windows or or also when we go lower in frequencies then a lot of this energy gets lost through your wall so if you do not have a solid uh, thick cathedral wall which is like a meter thick uh, a brick and mortar and stone then that wall will be starting to resonate with those very low frequency sound and then your room will start to uh, emit those long frequencies on the other side to your neighbors and that's when they are going to call the cops however there will be a frequency where the rooms will start to resonate and the better your building is the lower that frequency will be like in the case of a, a cathedral uh, that frequency will be below uh, 
8 hertz, like 4 hertz or so. So uh, that's why those buildings uh, can uh, reproduce uh, those church organs with uh, 16 hertz. There are two or three organs in the world that can go down as, as low as 8 hertz because their structure can withstand uh, 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 resonating even to below that frequency. But that's not true for our living rooms. So that's why at the very low frequencies we are not going to keep this mounting curve to infinity uh, but we are going to start to lose at around 20 Hertz like really excessively so it's not going to be 18 dB added especially if you have like a single wall or a double wall uh, construction that, that most of the homes are in the United States that you just have a drywall it's going to leak like a sieve below 100 hertz or so and um, but today is not what uh, i want to talk about oh my goodness we are hitting 20 more minutes so everyone just please uh, if you haven't brushed your teeth do it fast if you haven't had your uh, last goodbye shot for the day drink it up and uh, good night bye bye kids children adults <laughs> my friends and uh, we shall continue uh, from uh, this proposition that where does this lead us with a subwoofer placement? Bye-bye. Uh,